want to talk about turning disruption off and turning innovation on because we've seen disruption in so many industries. You know, we've seen it in music, we've seen it in chauffeur-driven cars, we've seen it in payments, and leaders are worried. Leaders are worried about, can we keep up with the pace of change? And I don't know about you, but I get up in the morning and I feel like that guy in the rocket sled. You know that guy whose face is just being peeled back by the forces of change? I mean, it's tough out there. And so I want to talk about who and what is likely to disrupt you, right? And more importantly, what can you do about it? What can we do about this disruption that's coming at us? And I want to do it in a framework of forces of disruption. So I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of technological forces of disruption that are coming at us right now. And I want to start with the basis of all this, which is connectivity, because connectivity underlies so much of disruption. The internet started from one thing, used for another, started to be the communications network during nuclear war, actually turned out to release information. Information found its freedom. Information is out there being beamed to us all the time, and we are empowered by that information. And we kind of forget that when the internet started, information only flowed one way. It was a tiny bit up and a little more back. And that's why the first page of Yahoo looked like this, and the first page of Travelocity looked like that. And there was another reason. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, it was just slow. But even so, that limited connectivity equaled great opportunity. The opportunity for disruption. Disrupted music and mapping and news and multifamily and travel. All disrupted by that little bit of communication. And then we had a big change because users began to create information themselves. And that created a two-way street as we were sending information upline. Right? People started writing and selling and rating. My friend Rich Barton, who started Expedia and Zillow, says, if it can be rated, it will be rated, right? So buyers still share experiences, but no longer one-to-one -one over the backyard fence. Now it's one-to-many over the network on sites like TripAdvisor, where they have 140 million hotel reviews. Nobody goes anywhere without reading a review today. So, that's changed the game, as has mobility, another source of data creation. Seven billion cell phones in the world, five billion of them internet connected. So we have five billion internet nodes that are constantly creating those trillions of tweets, a trillion images a year, posts, all these data being created in commerce. 50% of Priceline's bookings are mobile. If you're not in mobile, you're not in the game. It's another source of this two-way data. And then, as technologies converge, another source of data, right? Big data linked with cloud, linked with communications, gives you the basis for the Internet of Things. 38 billion things to be connected to the Internet by 2020. Things like the industrial Internet of Things, where sensors are running factories, right? Things like pill bottles that are connected to the Internet that remind you to take your pills. I'm part of the Internet of Things because I have a paper clip sized implant in my chest that monitors my heart and reports the performance of my heart every day to the doctor in case it's out of sync. They'll know, so I think it's kind of cool. I'm part of the Internet of Things, right? <laughs> And what that's done is taken that little stream of data that was connected back when Billy Gates was on a teletype and turned it into a raging torrent of data created by the Internet of Things, by wearables, by mobile devices, by all the devices that are creating data. And that, of course, has created this new term, big data. Big data, we're trying to deal with big data, and the fact that big data exists, we had to have a place to put it, these 2.5 quintillion bytes every day, that created the cloud, right? We had to have a place to put big data. What is the cloud? It just means instead of our own data center, we're using Amazon or Microsoft Cloud, we're using a shared data center. Well, why is that important? 
because it's instantly available, infinitely scalable, and insanely inexpensive. <laughs> 